Hi everyone, I'm Jane and today we are going to paint Mr. Crow in a creepy forest on a stage. Now this painting uses elements from and was inspired by the game Cube Escape made by the people over at Rusty Lake and I am always so inspired by the imagery in some of the games so I asked them if I could make a painting based on the game and they were sweet enough to say yes so thank you. If you haven't played this game, I highly recommend it. It is not for the faint of heart, so if you don't like scary, grotesque things, then it's probably not for you. But if you're okay with that kind of stuff, I would go download them on your phone right now because they're awesome. And this is not a sponsored video. I'm not being paid to do this. I just love the imagery from the game, and so I'm really excited to bring this to you today. Make sure you check out the video description below for a list of all the materials we use, as well as a link to where you can download the image to trace in the painting if you like. Now let's get started. To start off, we're gonna do a gray underpainting. So I'm gonna take my one inch flat brush and wet it in my jar, wipe it off on the edge a little bit. And I don't want a very dark gray, so I'm gonna go kind of medium light here. I'm gonna start by loading up with white paint. Remember, just kind of squish it into your paint. See how my bristles are flaring out? That helps suck the paint up into the brush so you can get quite a bit of coverage with a little less work. I'm just gonna grab a little corner of black. Don't worry about blending it in, just get everything covered. All right, I'm gonna let this dry completely. I'll probably get my blow dryer because we're gonna scrub next. And if this paint is even a little bit tacky, like if you touch it and your finger sticks to it a little bit, when we start scrubbing, you may lift some of that underpainting. So make sure it's completely dry before we move on. All right, now we're gonna scrub in kind of a misty, foggy background. And the reason I put the underpainting down is so that we don't have to focus on covering the background. We can just focus on getting the colors on the way we want them. So for this, I'm gonna be using my number 12 cloud brush. And if you don't have my brush, it's available on my website. There's a link in the video description below. So we wanna make sure that our crow stands out really, really well. So decide where you want him placed. I'm gonna have mine just off center here, just to the left of center. So I'm gonna grab some white and my brush is dry. If your brush is already wet, just squeeze it with a paper towel really good. It can be a little bit damp. It doesn't have to be absolutely dry. And I'm gonna grab just a tiny speck of black. I just want this to be a very light gray. Very, very light. Let's see, probably about like that right there. So just decide where that light is gonna be and start scrubbing and scrub it until it kind of fuzzes out. If you notice, I didn't pick up a ton of paint on my brush, just some on the end. I'd rather get too little paint than too much paint. So see how that color's just kind of disappearing? You can twirl it like that to really get it down in the texture of the canvas. And you can use it flat like that to kind of fuzz it out a little bit. That's why I like this brush, it's kind of it's kind of like having two brushes in one. I'm gonna get a little bit more of that. Every time I go back for paint, it's gonna be a little bit of a different color. The only area I'm really trying to control the color is right here. Because if it's too dark, then our crow will kind of fade into the background. He won't stand out as much. And I really want him to be the focal point. He's gonna be quite dark, so we need the background around him to be lighter. I'm gonna get a little more black, mix up a slightly darker color and start working out from there. When you get to the previous color you laid down, use lighter pressure and kind of scoot into it. See, my brush isn't really bent. I'm just kind of using the end of it and just lightly kind of scooting into it and that's giving me a nice soft transition. If you have this brush, I know I've heard a few people say that they're afraid to scrub with it too much. That's what this brush was made for. So don't be afraid to 
to scrub it to death. And this is kind of a test too, because this is the first time I'm using this brush. This is a brand new one for me. I've been using my tester. And so since this is a brand new brush, we'll see how many bristles it loses. What I did there, because I was having a hard time transitioning into that lighter color, was I just picked up a little bit more white and I'm using super light pressure and that helps me get a nice transition because the white right there was almost dry. So see, I just picked up a little speck of white on the end of my brush. Right here where I know I'm gonna have a hard time with that transition, lay it down, and then super light pressure, scoot into the white, the lighter area, I mean, and scoot back out into this darker area. If you put a lot of pressure on your brush right here when you're trying to blend, you're gonna end up laying down more of this darker color. So that's why I'm telling you, use light pressure there where you're trying to blend. You don't need a real definite gradation of light here to darker out this way. You can have patches of lighter and darker throughout. Toward the corners here, you don't have to stress about it too much because we are gonna put some curtains there. And so they're gonna cover a lot of this but I'm gonna get my color in there anyway because I'm not exactly sure where my curtains are gonna sit just yet. Again, a little bit of a hard transition there, so I just pick up a little more white and use light pressure. So this is a very similar technique to my smoky background that I did quite a while ago. And if you have missed that video, then I will put it up in the little information i-card up at the top and we go over this technique a little bit more in depth. It was a while ago, a little over a year ago I think, so I'm not using this brush, but that is just a good example that if you don't have my brushes, if you can't get them for some reason, that really you can use any kind of a brush. My brush isn't the only one you can do this with. See, even this paint color that I'm working in now is dry, but I'm still able to get that blended into it by picking up those little tiny bits of white and using that light, light pressure. but it doesn't have to be perfectly blended. Whatever kind of look you like. Be patient here. Don't try and scrub this all on and get it done in a couple of minutes. You know, it seems like I'm making it look really easy or I'm doing it super fast, 
But the thing is, I do this a lot. I'm very familiar with this technique. And I am also putting you in time lapse, so you really don't have a good idea of how long it's taken me to do this. So don't put pressure on yourself to do it the way you think I would do it or the way somebody else is gonna do it. Just give yourself the time that you need to do it the way you need to do it. I know some of you really don't like when you can see little speckles of the canvas through your paint, but you might see some of that doing this, but I encourage you to just, you know, leave it be. That's why we painted the underpainting gray in the first place, so that if any of that showed, it wouldn't be a big deal. If you spend too much time trying to get down in all the little holes and making sure that everything is filled, then you're gonna overwork your colors, parts of it are gonna dry, and you're probably gonna have a little bit of a harder time blending. Especially over here on the sides. It doesn't really matter, we're gonna have curtains there. Okay, scrub that whole background and so far I haven't lost a single bristle out of my brand new brush, so that's awesome. I'm gonna let this dry a little bit. I'm, I don't need to worry about it drying all the way, but we're gonna draw trees next. And when I'm doing straight lines, I like to put my hand on my canvas. So I'm gonna let it dry enough so that I can do that. All right, we're gonna add some distant trees. So I'm gonna mix up a gray color, probably along the lines of this color here. So I have my angle brush that I've wet in the jar and just wiped off the extra drip. I'm going to start mixing, mixing up a color pretty close to that. Hold it up to there and test it out, and I feel like that's still just a little bit too dark. That's better. Now I'm going to do four trees, and don't try and plan where your curtains are going to be right now. Just put your trees down as if they're going to be the only thing on the background. So I'm just going to start by drawing a line. I'm not going to try and make the tree from start to finish just yet. Remember the long tip of the angle brush always drags, so I've got it pointing up because I'm going to start up here. And I'm just going to bring a line down. It's a pretty straight line, but it's at an angle and all of them are going to be angled a little bit different. All right, now that I know where my trees are gonna be, I'm gonna mix up a little more of that color. And we can put some heavier pressure on our brush. So rather than just drawing the line, I'm gonna start up here and put some more pressure. And as I bring my brush down, I'm gonna apply even more pressure. And that creates a wider line. Don't worry about the very bottom of your trees being perfectly shaped. We're gonna add some more fog that's gonna cover that up. They can all be different widths. You can have some that are wider than others. But don't let them come to a point right up at the top of the canvas because that will seem very crowded. If you make the tree actually go off of the canvas, then that's gonna give the impression that you're in a forest with trees much taller than what you can see. If you're getting some little holes in the tree from your canvas, just get a little extra water. All right, now I've wet down my quarter inch angle brush and I'm gonna mix up some more of that color and we're gonna add some very simple, very small branches. Again, just make sure it's pretty close to that color you just did. So these branches I'm gonna to keep toward the top of the trees. And they're very simple, just like the trees themselves. I'm gonna start here with very little pressure and as I bring it straight down, I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure until I meet up with the tree trunk. 
and then just streak that in. We'll just add a couple little branches on them. The trees in this game are very suggested. They're not real ornate. And I think that's one of the things I like about it. Make sure all of your branches look a little different. Can be angled a little different than the other ones. Just do one on one tree, maybe two on another. Okay, we're gonna dry this completely one more time because we're gonna add some fog. We are gonna do quite a bit of drying in between layers in this painting. All right, so my trees are dry and we're gonna scrub some fog. Now I did have to clean this brush so it is wet, but I'm just gonna take up my paper towel and just kinda of squeeze the bristles. Don't, don't squeeze them and like twist them back and forth because especially when it's wet, you may start to loosen up the glue that holds it into the ferrule. So just kinda of squeeze it like that and that should be good enough. It's still a little bit damp. Now I'm gonna go with the color fairly close to what we have here. I can even go just a little bit lighter. You just don't wanna to be too dramatically different either way. So I'm gonna grab some of that white. There's a little bit of that gray still wet on my palette there. And it's a very, very light gray. So when you first load up your brush, don't blob it right here because then you're gonna have a really heavy spot. Start at the bottom because we do want the fog a little heavier at the bottom. And mostly I'm just using my brush pressed flat like that. I'm just kind of dragging it up a little, letting it very gently fog that tree out. and very lightly over this one as well. If you use too much, too much paint, you're gonna lose those trees completely. Just a little bit more. Always start at the bottom when you get a new load of paint though. And lightly work it up about three quarters of the way up the canvas. Still take it over your background a little bit. Don't just focus it right onto your trees. Now over here, because our background is a little darker, if I take this light color and put it over the background, you're gonna see it a little bit more than I'm comfortable with. If you like that look, that's okay. So I'm gonna make this color just a little bit darker. Just a tiny bit darker. Again, pretty close to the color that I have in the background. Okay, start at the bottom and over top of those trees a bit. Very light pressure here where it meets into the, the lighter fog. Let's go a little darker because we're getting even darker toward the base of the other tree. cleaned off my brush again because I do want to try and brighten this just a little bit more. That's a little bit damp though and if I scrub over it again I might actually lift that paint rather than applying more. So I'm just going to hit that with my blow dryer real quick. All right, perfect. Now we're starting to get a nice fogged out forest. 
So I just wanted to take a moment and show you guys this. I know some of you get really upset when you can see the canvas texture, but I don't want you to feel that way with this painting. That's part of what's helping us get the foggy look. You know, when somebody comes to view your painting, they're not gonna stand so close to it that that texture is painfully obvious to them. They're gonna stand and look at it from a little bit of a distance to take in the whole thing. So allow that texture to show because if you don't, then you're just gonna obliterate your tree and you won't see it at all. All right, now we're gonna do a couple more trees. These ones are gonna be darker and a little bit wider. That's gonna make them seem closer to us. So again, I've got my angle brush that I've wet and just wipe the extra drip off. I'm gonna grab just a little bit of white and mix it in my black mostly this time. So substantially darker, but still gray, not black. Let's hold that up there and I think it needs to be a little darker than that. Now again, think of where you want your crow to be. I'm gonna have mine right here, pretty much in front of this tree. So I don't want another dark tree that's right behind him that might blend in with part of his body. So I think I'll start with one right here. And we're gonna do it the same way, just kind of draw your line to begin with. Okay, so we did four, but this one's mostly gonna be covered up by our curtain. All right, let's mix up quite a bit more of that color. And these ones are gonna be wider. So when I showed you before how to press harder on your brush to get a wider line, I'm actually gonna do that twice on these trees, one on each side. But like with the back, they can all be different widths. One of them or two of them, maybe they're a little more narrow than that. I grabbed a little too much white. That's all right, because I'm gonna need a bit of this color anyway. So we'll start with this one. I'm gonna make this one narrow since I actually don't really care for this tree. Make sure it's filled in all the way. Just grab a little extra water and mix it in with the paint on your brush if you need to. Make sure also when you're doing your trees that you're not really getting a ridge of paint, like a, a line that stands up off of the canvas because then when we scrub our fog over it in a minute, you're gonna have a line in your fog. And if your tree's really fat, you can even turn your angle brush flat to fill it in. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my quarter inch angle brush grab some of that color. And these branches, I'm gonna bring down a little bit lower, but I'm gonna do them the same way. I don't need to worry about that one. It's mostly gonna be covered by a curtain. Maybe I'll just put one little one over here. So super simple trees. These are probably the easiest trees we've ever done. And now I'm gonna get my dryer and make sure these are completely dry because we're gonna do another layer of fog. All right, I have my cloud brush dried off on a paper towel again, and we're gonna do the same thing, same type of colors. And the bottom of this tree looks kind of doofy, but that's all right, because I'm gonna cover him up. So again, that super, super light gray, just barely gray. Start at the bottom. 
Now that back tree is about gone there at the bottom and that's great. We'll cover up the base of this one a bit. And take that fog up over top of the back trees too. Don't just focus on the ones that we just did. But I'm not gonna take this fog up quite as high, maybe just over halfway. Lightly, super light pressure, just barely touching the canvas. Let's just fade that out and we'll get a slightly darker color there in a minute. See, I had a little bit of a line in my tree there in the paint. And so you can see a little line. I don't think it looks too bad. It almost insinuates a highlight there, but that's what I mean when I said make sure that those trees don't have much texture. I'm gonna have to go over that one again after this paint dries. Okay, let's go just a tiny bit darker. And a little darker. All right, I dried that with my hair dryer. I'm gonna mix up some more of that super light gray and just go over the base of that tree a little bit more. All right, we're gonna dry it one more time and then we're gonna start drying our Mr. Crow in here. So I have my Mr. Crow here and I drew this out, scanned it, cleaned it up and then printed it out at a size that I like for my image. And we're gonna trace him on. And now I don't trace very often, so I might do it different than other people do it. I just used what I had and did what made sense to me. So I'm gonna lay him face down on a old canvas board and I'm gonna take a piece of charcoal and I can see him pretty good through the paper here. I don't think you can see him very well there, but I can see him pretty good on here. So wherever he is, I'm just gonna take this charcoal and scribble over top of him. I'm gonna take him and decide where I want him placed and where his legs end here is about where the bottom of my canvas is. Make sure he's straight up and down, placed where you like, and then tape him to the canvas. So you wanna make sure that your canvas is dry if it's not dry, you might peel up some of your paint when you take the tape off. Now I'm just gonna take a ballpoint pen and outline everything. You don't have to worry too much about putting pressure on here. You might get a little bit of transfer of that charcoal onto the canvas, but it will clean off once the entire painting is completely dry, you can clean it off. So I'm just kind of sketching back and forth like that on all of the lines. So I'm gonna throw you into super duper time lapse because this is gonna take me a few minutes. Just make sure that you either tape down the other sides or that you keep your hand placed so the paper doesn't kind of scoot around while you're sketching. I'm kind of going outside of my lines here and there, just, just little adjustments that I didn't really like in my sketch. Some of these small detail lines, like in his bow, and this line, and these little lines, I know they're there, so I'm not gonna sketch them on here because I'm just gonna paint over them anyway if I do. You can pull the paper up every once in a while, check, make sure you didn't miss anything. And that looks like we got him. I forgot to mention that you also want to plan where your curtains are going to be. I know exactly where my curtains are going to be, so I didn't have to really think about that. But don't put them too far over and then end up having to squish your curtain in here. So I'm going to start painting them in. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You can either take a liner brush with some black paint and go over all of your lines, or an acrylic paint marker to go over those lines. You can just not worry about your lines, like his lapel to his jacket here. They're gonna be the same color, so you could paint all of it just solid and then come back and add those lines back in. 
But what I'm gonna do is use my little quarter inch angle brush. I'm gonna mix up a dark gray. And that's what I'm gonna paint his jacket in with. Right here where this line separates the jacket from the lapel, because these two pieces are gonna be the same color, I'm gonna take my little angle brush and not quite touch that line. Pretty close to it, but I didn't quite touch it. And that way, when I do that on the other side the same way, see, I can still see my line there. So whatever you're most comfortable with, you do it that way. So I'm gonna paint in all of his jacket and lapel with this color, and then we'll start on some of the other parts. And I'm gonna do this part fast too, because it's gonna take me a little while to get into all these little nooks and crannies. When you start getting the little breaks in your paint like that, just get a little extra water and some more paint. When you get to the lines where it's gonna be a different color on the other side, you don't have to worry about not getting right up to that line, go ahead. We're gonna outline the entire thing in black afterwards, so we will end up covering up those lines. And if you need to use a little liner brush rather than a little angle brush like I'm using, that's okay. Whatever you're most comfortable with. Okay, now down here lower, just like our trees, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're gonna put fog over top of him again. If you happen to have gone over some of your lines, that's okay, just keep your sketch on hand so that you know where they are and you can just add them in with the black later. Let's take that same color real quick and fill in his belt. And his cane. And now I'm just gonna take some more white into that same color mixture, mixture, mix up a slightly lighter color, and we'll fill in his pants. Again, I'm gonna avoid this line in the center. I'm gonna take that same color and add some more white. Get an even lighter color. And we're gonna fill in his vest. All right, even more white. And we're gonna fill in his shirt. I'm gonna go quite light on this. and also his collar with this color. And I'm gonna go down to a little round brush now. I'm gonna go over that line because I feel like I wanna bring his collar a little farther to the center. So I'll just paint over that line and then I'll paint in the black line when I get to the outlining part. I'm just gonna get some white and we'll fill in his bow tie, and while we have the white on our brush, I'm also going to do his eye. Keep this part of his eye pretty circular. It can be a little bit flatter on the top, because he's got a little bit of a personality. It's kind of mysterious. He's not really angry though, so don't make it like flat on top. But maybe it just doesn't have to be quite as round as the rest of it. All right, for his head now, we wanna go pretty dark. 
but dark enough that black will still show up. Because we're going to add some black to it. So this gray is a little lighter than these trees and a little darker than these trees. And just fill in his whole head, not his beak and not this area around his eye. But everything else, go ahead and fill in with this color. And move to a liner brush if you feel like you need to in any areas. Notice I kind of avoided this front part and the crest on the top of his head. And you can go ahead and take this color all the way there, but I'm going to add other colors there, so I'm not worried about taking all the way to the edge just yet. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to pull in a little bit more black and get a darker color. And on the crest of his head, I'm going to start here and kind of pull it back a little bit. He doesn't have to have feathers poking off the whole way, but it doesn't have to be real solid and clean. I'm just worrying about the outer edge right now, not where these colors meet. We'll take it all the way down the back. Now we can come in here and just kind of dash that darker color in a little bit. And hopefully you can see that. I know the color difference isn't too dramatic here, but it will just be enough to give his head a little bit more dimension. I'm gonna wipe some of that off and grab some white and mix up a lighter gray. And we're gonna do a very similar thing here. Just kind of bring that lighter gray out a little into those feathers that poke out. And just kind of break it up into here a little. I'm not trying to blend. And I know that this kind of looks weird right now, but once we start doing the outline, it will pull this in and it won't look so weird. I think I wanna stay with that same color we just did on his neck and I'm gonna paint his beak in with it. Right here at the very base of his beak, I'm gonna grab a little bit of black. Just use the tip of the angle brush and kinda of flick up a little bit of shadow. And we can even take that darker and that darker color and just give him some little sketchy shadows here and there. Not too much. Back to my liner brush and pure black and I'm gonna paint in this area around his eye, just pure black. Take it up over the top of his eye just a little bit and meet it up with his beak. Same thing over here. Bring it down under his eye, up, and meet it up with his beak. I'm gonna take the end of my brush Dip it a little bit into my black. I don't want a ton of black paint on there. And put a dot square in the center of his eye. Now it has a little point on it, so once it dries a bit, I'm gonna come back and just squish that point down a little. I forgot to paint his hands in, so let's do that. It's, I'm mixing up a color pretty similar to what we did on his head. But since his head and his hands are so far away and his hands are really gonna have quite a bit of fog over top of them, it doesn't really matter. Just get a color in there. Don't get hung up on how his hand looks. You know, if you really hate his hand, just make sure there's a good amount of fog over it. You just wanna get something there so that if it happens to show through the fog a little bit, kinda of like how this tree does, that you can tell that that's a hand and he's got his hand on a cane.
Okay, I'm gonna use my little liner brush and it's got an extra drip of water in it that's gonna help us keep nice, sharp lines while we outline. So my paint's not flowing, but it's definitely a lot thinner than it is straight out of the tube. Roll your brush so that you keep it in a nice, sharp point. And I'm gonna start on his vest here. And it's all about pressure. I tell you that all the time, and that's because it's so important. If you need to put your hand on your canvas to get nice control of your pressure, then do it. So I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna put a little bit heavier pressure so he's got a fatter line at the top of his vest here. And bring it down. Same thing here. And see now you can tell that we're covering up those little areas where we left the line visible. And then those little lines in his vest that we didn't draw on here, I'm gonna put less pressure and get a thinner line. And that's what I'm gonna do all the way through here. Take a super, super thin line down And heavier here. So this is why I didn't outline him in black paint before I started because I didn't want to have to do that twice. It requires a lot of attention and I just didn't want to put that kind of attention into it two different times. All right, so on his head, let's just start by outlining his beak. When we get here, I'm gonna start using the very tip of my brush. And if you can tell, this brush has a very sharp point and I'm not gonna put very much pressure on it at all. Just the very end of the brush and I'm just gonna kind of flick this black just a little bit, maybe not quite that much. I guess that's okay. If you do something you don't like, just take a damp brush and wipe it away real quick before it gets a chance to dry. This is a really good exercise in brush control. If you're not comfortable with brush control and keeping the right amount of pressure on your brush to get thin lines, then this is a good way to practice. Because remember, no matter how fine your brush is, if you put too much pressure on it, you're gonna get a fat line. So let me show you, on this brush, if I put very, very little pressure, I can get a hairline. I mean, it's just the width of a hair. But if I put too much pressure, I can get quite a fat line. So the size of the brush does not necessarily mean that's the size of brush stroke that you're gonna get out of it. All right, so we're gonna come down into here and then using almost no pressure, see I'm just kind of scribbling some little lines right there into the base of the feathers. And I'm gonna do the same thing up in here. Maybe bring it down just a little bit.
And same thing here. I'm just going to use the very end of the brush and give him some little creases in his bow tie. At the top of his head, I'm going to flick out from here just a little bit. Give him some little feathers that are poking up there. And kind of flick here like we did with the angle brush when we were filling in this darker color. come from here around and give him a little bit of a, a brow line or something. And then just some little scribbly kind of dashes down through here to indicate that he's covered in feathers. push that little dot in his eye in, make it kind of flat. And then I'm gonna take the very end of my brush again, dip it into my white, get just a tiny speck of white, so you don't have very much. And we're gonna give him a little shine in his eye. Don't put it dead center. I'm gonna put it just off to the side a little bit. All right, our Mr. Crow is done. Our cane got a little wonky, but that's all right, because we're just gonna put some fog over it. So again, we're going to let him dry completely. I'm probably going to use my hair dryer. We're going to add one more layer of fog and then we're going to do our curtains. All right, one more layer of fog. Same thing, super light gray, almost white. And we're going to start at the base here. Let it cover his legs and his ugly cane. and then lightly take it up. I'm not gonna take this up anywhere near as high as the other ones. Just really dig it into the texture there. Okay, so now we're gonna start on our curtains. And I have a little piece of white chalk, and I'm gonna take my ruler and just make a mark on either side where I want the ties on the curtains to be. That way I don't have one that's like clear up here and one that's clear down here. So they're pretty much in the same place. It doesn't have to be exact. I'm just gonna make a little line here and a little line here. Now up at the top, I do wanna measure out about how wide I want the curtains so I don't get carried away and make them too big. And I think I'm only gonna go about three and a half inches in on each side. So I'm just making a mark about three and a half inches from the edge. Just draw out a basic shape that kind of comes down and around. I like that better. And then from here at that line, just kind of down. And the same thing on the, this side. Once we start painting this in, you can make any adjustments to them that you need. All right, this is my half inch flat brush. It's the same brush that we use to paint the underpainting. It's just a smaller size. And if you're using really inexpensive student grade paints that are quite transparent, you might wanna paint the curtains in white first. But I know that with the Liquitex Basics, if I use the paint heavily, I can cover that no problem. So I'm just gonna mix some Diox Purple with a little bit of red, mostly purple. And I'm gonna put a little more attention into the edge here so I can get a nice clean line. and then just fill this in. You don't have to worry about brush directionality, just make sure that you're covering the background. It doesn't have to be a perfect 
blend at any particular solid color. This is just the underpainting for the curtains. And the same thing on this side. Get a little crazy with your line, just take a slightly damp brush and immediately clean it up. Okay, I dried these with my hair dryer so that I don't streak paint together rather than laying down the colors that I want. Now, what we're gonna do is focus on just making some really subtle folds in our curtains. And then after we've done that, we can come back and amp it up. So I'm gonna start with some red and I'm gonna squish my brush into it, really load that red up into my brush. And then I'm gonna just grab a little corner of purple, just a little bit. I'm gonna start on the edge and be very careful down this edge so that I can get right up to that line, not lose control of it. Now here's the important thing, as we start to swipe around, the tendency might be to turn your brush with the curve, but keep your brush parallel to the ground. So as you come down and start to curve around, your brush stroke gets more narrow. And we kind of end where we drew that line. That's where all of these lines that we do are gonna end. They're gonna swoop off right there. I'm gonna grab some purple and I'm gonna go right over top of that line and swoop into there again. Light pressure just to dust out any hard line in the purple. It's okay if our red has a hard line because that's gonna indicate a fold, but the purple is in the shadow, so there wouldn't really be a hard line there. I'm gonna go over again, swoop it off to the side, and just kind of going back and forth between purple and red. I'm not trying to really draw folds just yet, and I'm letting streaks be in there. This is just gonna help us get an idea that there's some shadows in, in these curtains. Remember to take it all the way down and swoop it at that line. That's a good start for there. Let's do the same thing on the bottom. All of my brush strokes here are gonna start right at that line. So as I go across, that's where all of these brush strokes are gonna start. So I'm gonna bring that down the edge here. Get some purple, starting at that line. Smooth out the line in the purple. And just go back and forth between red and purple. Try not to create stripes necessarily. Just an interesting blend that goes back and forth between the purple and the red. I think that's good for now. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Now the most important thing in what we just did is that you don't overwork the paint. If you overwork it, you're just gonna blend it in and you're gonna lose all of your definition. 
But now, if you can kind of see, we've got a bunch of small folds and ripples and creases insinuated in here. And so this is gonna be a good starting point. All right, let's play with these highlights a bit. I'm gonna use my angle brush and I'm just gonna load up with my cadmium red. Keep it pretty smooth so I've got a nice chiseled point. And I'm gonna decide on an area that I feel like I want it to be a nice bright highlight. Now you don't have to take these highlights from the top all the way down to the edge. It can be highlighted in an area. So like right here, I feel like I want, oh, I've got a little bit of wet paint there. That's all right. I feel like I want it to be nicely highlighted from about here to here. So I'm gonna take this and put a good amount of pressure on my brush and just swipe some of this bright red down the edge and let it taper off at the bottom there. Then, to get rid of this hard line, I'm gonna turn my brush at a little bit of an angle. So, rather than my brush being straight up and down like this, I'm gonna tilt it just a little bit. And with super light pressure, just with the tip of the brush, I'm just gonna streak down that edge and see how it smooths that edge right back in. So let's do another one. I feel like right here we've got a nice bright spot. So I'm gonna take a good amount of that red down, let it taper out, turn my brush so it's at about the 11 o'clock position, and then slightly swipe down. And red is quite transparent, so as it dries, that area that you smooth out in the back is gonna get a little bit more transparent. Take another one there and meet it up with that, actually. If you need to get a little extra water, if you're getting a lot of drag and not so much of a smoothing effect, that's okay, too. Right here, it's pretty dark, but I want a little bit of a brighter spot. I did get the idea of the curtains from one of the Cube Escape games, the one called Theater, but my curtains are a lot different than those ones. See, now we're starting to see some real folds in these curtains. And back here, it's quite dark. If you decided that you wanted a bit of a fold there, you can just go ahead and add it. It doesn't have to already be existing there. That's looking pretty good. Let's do the bottom, and we're gonna do it the same way. Let's do the same thing over here. Over here I am tilting my brush the opposite direction to about the one o'clock position. So I'm always tilting it, the point into the line just a little bit.
Now, if you're happy with the way your highlights look, you can absolutely stop there. I'm gonna kick it up a notch more and use some Napthol Crimson. Now, if you don't have Napthol Crimson, you can use Cadmium Red Medium Hue, or even just mix a little bit of yellow in with it. I really like the Napthol Crimson because it, it gives a nice highlight to the Cadmium Red, but it's not too terribly different. So wherever I feel like I really want a nice bright area, I'm using my quarter inch brush now. I'm gonna kind of do the same thing. Take some of that nap fall down and then lightly just dust it into the red. And it looks quite different when it's wet, but as it dries, it will mellow out and become a little more transparent. I'm just using super light pressure, not applying too much of this color. Just keep that line at the back smoothed out. The one facing our crow can be a hard line. And on the other side. Okay, one last thing and we're done. I have a little bit of raw umber, but you can use burnt umber or any dark brown you have. It really doesn't matter. I'm gonna load up with that on my angle brush. And right here at the top of this line, I'm just gonna make a line for our tie. And I'm gonna do that on either side. And then I'm gonna grab a little bit of yellow oxide and go right over that. And it's kind of smearing into the brown and that's okay. That's what I want. And then I'm gonna sign it. And there's your Mr. Crow from the Rusty Lake Games Cube Escape. Thank you again to Rusty Lake for allowing me to use these images in our painting today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do with your painting. If you haven't yet already, make sure you subscribe so that you can paint with me every week. You can do so by clicking here. If you'd like to keep painting with me today, check out these two videos that I've picked just for you. Thank you as always for painting with me everyone, and I'll see you next time.